Hello, this is uh, Jayantu Chatterjee from IIT Kanpur. We have been discussing about managing services and the contemporary issues. So, in this week 5, uh, we can first start with a bit of a recap about our last week's uh, discussions. So, last week if you remember, we took up a major case study and this case study was of the uh, Arvind Eye Care Hospital and how that one single hospital uh, grew over time into a global organization, uh, a service model uh, that has been emulated in a large number of countries and is uh, globally famous for its frugal approach and high quality medical care at low cost. When we discussed about Arvind Eye Care, we discussed two important points about creating service excellence. One was about the service process. We showed that how Arvind Eye Care has used uh, different best practices from manufacturing assembly line, from techniques used in industrial engineering in manufacturing and have applied those models, those principles, those best practices in creating innovative processes, which vastly reduces cost, manages the waiting time and the queue time at a minimum level and optimizes the prime time of the doctors and the experts, so that they can focus only on the core steps of the cataract operation or the treatment for diabetic retinopathy and so on. So, this was one major learning from Arvind about creating service business excellence by adopting good science to create good process practices. We looked at how they have used line balancing techniques, how they have used uh, Q theory, Q management, how they have uh, used uh, job descriptions and uh, job partitions and workflow, which provide on one hand very precise and very clear ideas about the steps, the sequences, but yet provide autonomy, some decision latitude to the frontline employees, the paramedics, uh, the initial um, medical executives who study the patient's history or who decide about uh, the treatment route. This duality we then expanded upon and understood that this is a key requirement for service excellence. We looked at the famous triangle, where at the three corners we have the service organization, the service employee and the service consumer. We understood that on each vector of this triangle, we have 
some tension between efficiency and autonomy or between control and co-creation and so on. And we understood that this duality is a fact of life and this duality needs to be managed, it cannot be wished away or cannot be resolved, but we need to practice it simultaneously that on one hand we should have clear well defined process flow. On the other hand at each of the touch points we have to give some freedom of action, some latitude for decision making at the for the front line employees. We studied the cycle of success and the cycle of failure. We understood that how the employee cycle that means the, the process flow that makes the employees happy and successful is so closely tied to the customer cycle where the customer satisfaction and repeat visit and referrals and customer advocacy go in a cycle very well coupled with the employee cycle related to employee turnover, employee uh, motivation, employee uh, satisfaction and so on. And we understood that to achieve this employee empowerment, we need a kind of leadership which we call the level 5 leadership, which is so well depicted in the biography of Dr. V, a grand combination of strong willpower with humility, humble attitude, determination and politeness, not arrogance, not the arrogance of the expert but almost a savant like belief in a superordinate mission. And we concluded last week that in excellent service organizations, even the frontline employees, service personnel at every level are inspired by this leadership, missionary leadership. So, that when service employees believe that they are doing something which is mission oriented, they are doing something which is beyond profit making, which is contributing to the greater good. that missionary zeal, that belief in something more than ordinary business creates this employee empowerment and employee dedication and employee engagement, which are fundamental requirements for service excellence. Having understood these building blocks of service excellence, this week we will start with the understanding of two progressive vectors. One is about creating the value proposition for a service business by combining those business, uh, those building blocks that we have discussed earlier. And we will discuss a very tightly related concept of positioning. Simply put, positioning means defining in detail what business you are in, 
what is your service business all about? Obviously, it means that we have to start our definition process from the most important part of a of any business and that is customers. So, we first start with what does our organization stand for in the minds of the current and potential customers. So, once we define that what customers do we serve now and which ones we want to target and this is a very it is a requirement that initially we have a very crisp definition here. So, remember that Arvind eye care hospital was very clear about their initial positioning they were serving people at the bottom of the economic pyramid people who could not afford the earlier style of medical services. So, customer was very clearly defined and the service was very clearly defined cataract operation. So, what customers do we serve now and which ones would we like to target? I will come to this which ones would we like to target uh, a little later. First, we start with which customers we want to serve. This is the process of segmentation. A customer segment should be very clearly definable, should be measurable, it should have the as a, as a business opportunity or as a service opportunity it should be significant, it should have growth potential and all these we saw uh, when we uh, in, in the initial part of uh, the Arvind eye care description that how big is this opportunity and how they tracked the opportunity and what was required. The next thing is to very clearly define that what does what is the value proposition for our current service products for this particular market segment. How each of our service products differ from the competitor. Sarvin's value proposition was very clear that it was going to provide service at a price level which was at that point of time way lower than what was available in the market. Yet their quality was in many ways superior to what was available in the market. They redefined quality they define quality away from the frills. Maybe their patients slept on uh, uh, wooden chow pies, slept on mats in high summer, maybe not all of them were in air conditioned rooms unless it was medically required, but the operation was excellent, the treatment was excellent. The quality of lens provided was excellent. So, topmost quality for the core and the an acceptable level of quality for the frills. So, this sort of combination, this sort of definition is very clear, and then how well do we target the customer, whether our services are meeting all the needs, what are the future opportunities, this you will see the way Arvind expanded from cataract operation to the other different areas of um, eye care including areas like glaucoma very uh, complex uh, areas, but they did it step by step. We studied that also that how 
from 1976 to 1971, 8 to 1981 to 1984, how they took short small steps and then started taking longer leaps. And today they are spread over many countries, over many locations covering almost the entire range of eye care services. So, to understand this pathway, we can look at this particular picture here. So, we are looking at narrow service offering for a few customers. This is where Arvind started initially. This is what we call fully focused service. So, service and market focused. Market is people at the bottom of the pyramid, people who cannot afford, could not afford in those days high quality medical service at a price which was significantly lower than private medical service that was available at that point of time and cataract operation. So, it is the breadth of service offering, offering is narrow, market is narrow. Today, Arvind has moved from there to here. That means, their market focus is clear. They are still doing eye care only. They are not into coronary operations, they are not into brain surgery, they are not into orthopedics, they are not into gastroenteritis, they are fully focused on eye care. So, their market is clear, but today they are serving a very wide range of different types of markets. Now, there could be a uh, unfocused, this is a difficult proposition today in today's world, but there are organizations who try to be everything to everybody. So, a very large uh, supermarket or department store can be an example. Shopper stop, when they started, they were sort of uh, market focused, but they, they became kind of very widely focused and that was creating problem for them. They are now again getting back to a market focus. There can be businesses, service businesses which are just focused on the service, which means they serve many markets, they serve many markets. But their service offering is narrowly defined. So, we have for example, a Bhojohori Manna, a chain of restaurants started originally in Calcutta, focused on offering Bengali traditional cuisine in a very modern ambience. They started by opening one, then two, then three restaurants in Calcutta, but they are now spread over uh, many cities in India. But they remain focused on Bengali cuisine, but they are serving today many different locations. So, you can see therefore, you can define your business to clarify your offering position, this principle of positioning and this classifying your service offerings are very closely connected. So, this is what we will try to uh, study further as we go to examples and other nuances. Important point is that service excellence needs usually a position here, which is 
very crisp like Bajori Manna or Arvind Eye Care. Bajori Manna started with one restaurant serving traditional Bengali restaurant in modern ambience in one location. Over time, they move here. That means, the service remains the same, but they can serve many markets. Or like Arvind Eye Care, the move can be from here to here, which means you provide a wide range of services, but remain focused on the market characteristics. But if you widen the market characteristics and widen the number of services offered, in today's condition with what we call earlier unfocused or everything for everyone is a kind of service business not very tenable in emerging markets. And for that matter in most places, many such businesses which are very large stores like Walmart and others they have to redefine in many ways, they have redefined their business in many ways over time. But it is doubtful that whether today, if you are a service entrepreneur, you can start with that sort of huge big bang. So, most probably you will start as a fully focused service and market focused business and then you can either move here, where you are, you are still market focused, but you are providing a wide range of uh, services or you can be very focused on your service, but you can serve a wide different market areas. So, either expand on range of services, expand your portfolio of services or remain focused on a type of service, a, a range of service, but crisply defined market, eye care or serve many markets, Bangalore, Calcutta, Delhi, Bombay and so on, but have one offering, high class traditional Bengali cuisine. So, this is something you have to understand well, this, uh, this four quadrants, look at different types of examples around you and then get to this diagram and try to define your business that who are you serving what are you serving, why are you different from others, why will anybody buy this service number one, why will they buy from you and why will they continue to buy from you, these three fundamental questions, why will anybody buy this service, why will they buy from you and why will they continue to buy from you? These three fundamental questions can however, be further expanded into the six blocks that are in front of you, where we have added the dimensions of who are these customers, who are the customers today and who are the customers maybe tomorrow. And I would like you to, this is a small assignment which you will have to post on the forum. So, you choose first from these four quadrants a position. Having chosen a position, then you go to this diagram and define. It could be a, a business which is similar to an existing business or it could be a new idea that you want to promote some innovation that is now bubbling in your mind after these four weeks of interaction. Either way you have to use these two diagrams 
and crisply define and post. What is your service business? Who are, who are you serving? Who are you serving today? Whom will you serve tomorrow? How is your service different from competitive services? How will you reach them? Fundamentally, in any marketing book, you can also look at segmentation, targeting and positioning. And in your textbook, you can refer to this textbook of uh, by written by uh, Lovelock, Witts and myself, Services Marketing, People, Technology, Strategy, 7th edition, published by Pearson India. And this assignment for this, you should refer to chapter 3 and chapter 4. Chapter 4, we have discussed earlier, chapter 3, some of the key points we have discussed today and then you should be able to do this assignment. Thank you.